Okay, so once again, guys, if you can just uh, start off by typing in the chat, what are the most common objections you're getting when you're meeting with clients or when you're speaking to clients and you're trying to book an appointment? Um, what are the common things you're hearing? Let's have each person type something in the chat. So I'm saying not interest rate, not interested. The interest rates are going up. I'm holding off, not in a rush to buy. Will you give back your commission? Interest rates, list price stocks, not financially ready, want to wait, just starting to look. The prices and the interest rate is too high. I'm holding off. Just browsing at the moment. How about one, um, I'm working with an agent. I'm already working with an agent. Mom's a realtor, common objection that they're interested. Market's too high, waiting for prices to drop. I have another agent. about like not sure if it's a good time because of the market, right? Already pre-approved, waiting for prices or interest rates to drop. Market is crashing, there you go. Waiting for the next presidency. <laughs> they're waiting for Trump 2024. Is that what they're waiting for? <laughs> all right, good stuff. These are all good. So what I want you guys to notice, pull up the chat, guys, like open up the chat if you don't have it open. And I want you just to look and you'll see that there's a lot of common ones that you're seeing like all across the board. A lot of them have to do with Either I'm not ready or I'm just looking, I'm just browsing or something to do with the market. Like the prices are too high or the interest rates too high or I'm waiting or I'm watching the market common or something like that, right? I have another agent, can't afford a home right now. There's a few common ones, right? So I think it's important that we work with those common ones because you guys surveying you guys all across the board you guys are getting a lot of the same common objections, right? Um, and the big one, guys, is the market. Um, you know, either it's too high right now, interest rates are too high, or the market's changing, or the market's crashing, or something to do with the market. So I think what I want to do today is I want to do a bit of role play and feedback, um, right? And I want to put some people in the hot seat because... Here's the thing, when you're talking to a client, you never know what they're gonna say at what given time, right? So part of being a good communicator, being a good speaker on the phone, being able to talk to someone in person, it's two different things, right? It's number one is learning what to say, like knowing how to answer that objection and being able to deliver that confidently. And it's also being able to like, just deliver it like at the drop of a hat, right? Because you can be in a conversation and then all of a sudden they say this, so the conversation goes completely left or right. So it's also being able to understand what to do so that you're not thrown off. Cause let's say you may know what to say, like, you know, the information, but because someone just throws you in the hot, on the hot spot, like you get nervous and stuff like that shooken up. Right. So you have like nervousness and then you have like, do I know what to say? Two different, two different things, right? So it's important that we have both of those down. Like we know what to say and we've practiced it enough times to where we can now say it confidently. And then we also use certain tips and strategies that gives us enough time to react so that we can reduce the nervousness, right? 
So today's exercise is really going to be on testing you on those two things, right? And I think what would make it effective so everyone can learn is by just putting some people in the hot seat yeah. right off the bat. Um, putting some people right on, right, right on the hot seat right off the bat so that we can all learn from it and we can be able to coach, right? So whoever volunteers or whoever I call on, actually, this is not going to be a volunteer. I'm just going to call on somebody, right? It's really just to test your skill set and it's really so the rest of the people can learn. Right. So no nervousness. Don't worry. You're fine. This is the learning. This is a safe environment right here where we're all here to learn. Right. We're all here to learn and grow and push each other to, to be better. Um, so the big one is, yeah, the, the interest rates are up. Looks like the market's going to crash. I don't know if it's a good time to buy. Right. So uh, let's see. Any, meeny, miny, I'm going to call on uh, Mauricio. <laughs> Mauricio, unmute yourself, brother. Let's go, Mauri. Let's go. Let's go. Know, and then we're going to give him some feedback. We're going to coach him and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so, Mauricio, um, yeah, you know, thanks for calling me. Um, yeah, I, I was on Zillow six months ago, and um, I, just, I just held off because – you know, the market, it's like, it, it looks like it's going to crash. And I don't know, property prices are going down and the interest rates are up. And I just don't know if it's a good time to buy. Right, Enrique. Um, and I have a lot of clients in your same situation. I know there's a lot of speculation on the news. You know, all my friends are saying the same thing. Market's going to crash, you know, sky's falling, whatever. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, you were looking to get a house, right? Yeah, yes, I was. Okay. And are you renting now? Yeah. Yeah. We're renting right now in San Jose. Okay. How's your rent looking? Uh, yeah, it's the rent, the rents, you know, it's high. It's like 3000 a month. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, I mean, what, what type of monthly payment are you looking for as a homeowner? I know your rent is about 3000 something. Um, yeah, at the most, maybe 3,500 if it's like a house that I own. 3,500. Okay. And then how long do you think you're going to continue renting until you jump back into the market to actually buy a home? I really don't know. I just don't know if it's a good time to buy right now. Like I, it's, I see the, the news and the interest rates are going up and mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, the stock market's crazy. And like the, how I think the prices may come down. I don't, I just don't know if it's a good time. Got it. Got it. Um, and I, I mean, obviously the, the interest rates did go up. Um, but when we were in this previous market, these interest rates were extremely low. They were a, at a historic low, right? It wasn't a normal market. Before COVID, they were kind of around like the five or six percent. Now we're starting to see this to go back to that type of market, right? So what I tell a lot of my clients, which are in, your same, in the same situation as you, is if you can afford that monthly payment, right? And, you know, the interest rate is what the interest rate is, right? Let's say you can't afford that monthly payment or maybe less than what you're doing in rent now, you'd be paying your mortgage off as opposed to someone else's mortgage, right? If you keep yeah. rent two to three years, let's say interest rates go even higher, right? Let's say homes keep selling and prices go up even more. You may have to wait more or just continue renting as opposed to making a move right now. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand. I hear what you're saying. I just don't, I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't, I've never done this before. So I don't know if it's a good time. Like I, I think I'd probably rather wait to see if the prices come down more. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing is that you would rather wait for these prices to go down even more. What, what price would we have to look at in order for you to make that move? Uh, I don't even know. Like, yeah, I mean, just, the lower, the better, right? Yeah, no, I completely agree. Again, I have clients in your same situation. So what I advise all my clients and what I recommend for you is that we jump on a quick Zoom call. Um, we actually go over what the market is looking like and what the numbers look like for you. That way we know if it's a good time for you to buy now or if we should wait a little bit longer. But at least you'll be aware and know and have a good pulse on the current market. How does that sound? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, okay let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Good job, Maudie. Give it up for Maudie, guys, for participating in this. I'm glad I went first, bro. Now it's out. <laughs> yeah, good job. Put you on the spot. That's all good. That's all good. Um, let's get some feedback, guys. Um, in the chat, please write what do you think Maudie did good? And then where are maybe some areas for improvement? And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of assess that and, and give Maudi some feedback. Any advice is good advice, guys. <laughs> yeah, just give them some advice. This is this is Maudi's chance to grow, right? So your guys' uh, response or you know your perception of how he did is important because right now you're helping him out. And you're helping the rest of the people. So I'm writing some stuff in here. And I will say I was very nervous during that whole thing because I, I hate doing these just because I'm on the spot, but I have to do it anyway. And it just makes me more confident at the end of the day when I'm by myself, um, which is I know the situation for a lot of people here. I am the most nervous when we're doing Zillow Flex scripts. I couldn't think. And I was good at it. I just couldn't think. But anyway, guys, I appreciate all Different perspective. <laughs> uh... Okay, so here's, a, here's some of the stuff that people wrote. Um, acknowledge some of your concerns, repeat and improve, stayed calm, his tone was good, confident, speaking to the client, book the appointment to educate more on the market, very knowledgeable and calm, provide different perspective. I wrote compared renting versus owning. He explained other people feel the same way, it makes people feel like they're not in the same situation alone. Okay, good. All good feedback, guys. Um, yeah, so... What I like, Maudi, is that you remained calm. You know, you didn't get all like worked up and you kind of matched my tone, right? Like, because I was kind of like, yeah, I wasn't too hyper as well. And you kind of matched the tone and you kept it conversational. Mm -hmm. um, you also gave some perspective on like renting versus owning. You started asking questions, right? I like that you asked questions. You asked like, how much do I pay for rent right now? How long do I plan to rent for? How much, would, how much would I want to afford or what would the price need to be? So you were looking for information that you can use in the conversation, which was great, right? Because a lot of times when someone throws an objection at you, here's the thing that we got to understand is it doesn't mean that it's a, a knockout punch. It doesn't mean that it's a no, right? It just means that you have to ask more questions and you have to walk them through some of their concerns, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, in a perfect world, you call and you're like, hey, this is Maudi. I'm calling to see if you're interested in buying. Yeah, I'm interested in buying. When can we meet? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> it, it doesn't go that way, right? Like, that's not the way it goes. So we have to already just take that out of our mind. It doesn't go that way, right? There's going to be some sort of pitch that you're going to do. There's going to be some sort of response or objection from the client, or they're going to voice a concern, right? And then it's just a matter of asking questions and walking them through that dialogue. Um, I think what's important though, guys, and this is a big one that I want to maybe reiterate with Maudi is that um, in the beginning, when I told you that I was concerned about the market, I think you, you just got to remember to repeat and approve that, like yeah. repeat that back to me. Right. Because, and I know you're the first one, so maybe the nerves or whatever, but right off the bat, you're like, well, and then you started kind of going into your pitch. Right. But here's why the repeat and approve is extremely important because the repeat and approve is going to do two things. It's going to allow me as the person on the phone to know that you hear me and you're listening to me. Okay. Right. And then it's also going to help you because it's going to help you have a chance to pause and think about what you're going to say next. Right. So let me like, let me give you an example of that. Um, Maori, throw that objection right back at me. 
Hey, Enrique, listen, I appreciate you calling me. Um, to be honest, markets all over the place, interest rates are crazy. I think it's going to crash, and I really don't think it's a good time for me to even entertain any type of home shopping right now. But thank you so much for calling me. I'll definitely check in with you when I'm ready. Okay, so here's no repeat and approve. Hey, Mounty, um, you know, but what I'm seeing, man, is there's actually a lot of good opportunities right now. You know, a lot of people are getting deals and we're able to negotiate and stuff like that. Like if we can help you negotiate a good deal, you know, um, do you still want to buy? Okay, so that's, that's one example, right? That's me not repeating and approving. That's me just like, he said something and I'm just going into my, my pitch, right? Which is, is not the best way to handle uh, that, right? Because I didn't, I completely disregarded Maori's concern, right? And then you ended up doing it. You ended up repeating and approving later, right? And mine was a little, I want to show you an extreme example, right? Um, but here's the thing, like, repeat that. Just do it again, Maori. Give me that same, that same objection. So yeah, Enrique, uh, I appreciate you reaching out to me, man. I know you've been checking in. I've been getting your emails, messages. <clears throat> I just don't think it's a good time for me to buy right now. Interest rates are crazy high. You know, the market's all over the place. And I honestly think it's going to crash. All my friends are saying the same thing. So I think I'm going to hold off for now, but thanks for checking in. Hey, Maori, thanks for giving me that feedback. You know, it sounds like what I hear you saying is, is, you know, you think the market's going to crash. The interest rates are high. Uh, you don't know if it's a good time to buy. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, a lot of people are, are in that same boat. Uh, but what I'm finding right now, Maori, is that um, although, you know, there's some of that happening, we're seeing that there's some opportunity on the other, on the other side of that. You know, um, have you looked into like what some of the opportunities are with the changes in the market? Oh, I, I, you mind if I jump in real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Right, if, if you pay attention to what Enrique is doing and if you, if you watch him throughout, even when he's communicating in person, when he's asking you guys questions in the meetings, he always he always hears you out, and then he he always repeats that. What I hear you saying, right, and then he repeats it right back. And it's very subtle, but he does it he does it pretty often, right. And the reason why I'm making you guys aware of it is because this is something that you can practice not just in this role play. This is something you can practice with family, friends, so that you get you get that technique of utilizing this skill. Right. Because if you don't if you just hear it right now and don't practice it, it, it's just gone. So I want you guys to understand to start using this and not just this role play, but to get good at it. You have to start using this throughout your day, family, friends, significant others and just using that. Right. And, and again, once you do that, then it starts becoming natural. And if you again, I, I just wanted to kind of jump in there, Enrique, because I don't want us to say something here and not continue to practice it. Yeah. So you want to know how to have better relationships with your significant other, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your nieces, your nephews, just use repeat and approve all the time. Like when someone says something, like just repeat it back to them and say, Hey, what I'm hearing you say is this. And then they're going to go, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of time arguing guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then a client. But then I under, now I understand being in the business. I'm like, Alessandra, my wife tells me the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Why are we doing that shit to me? The Jedi shit? <laughs> you know, because because here's what it does is because here's here's two things that can happen, right? Like number one is you're like, yeah, that 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 is my concern. That is what I'm saying. And now you know what the concern is, and now you know what you have to attack. Or the other outcome is no, that's not what I'm saying. What I meant was this. And then you're like, oh, okay. I thought you meant this, but actually you mean this, right? Because sometimes they'll say something and then we thought they meant this part of it. And then we start attacking that. And then they're like, dude, you're not even listening, bro. Like you're arguing, you're trying to sell me on this whole thing. And like, that wasn't really what I meant. It wasn't the concern. That wasn't the concern. Like I'm not tripping about the rates. I'm tripping about the stock market or whatever it might be, right? So that's why it not only in business, but it applies just in, in relationships, you know, with anybody, right? Any person is repeating and approving is going to help you clarify, are you saying 
what I heard you say. And, and Enrique, you kind of you kind of touch on something right now in regards to because and it goes into the same same thing what Mauricio was saying. He said the broad statement about the market, right? So then after you repeat that back to them, right? Okay, you're concerned about the market. I totally understand where you're coming from. Is the next thing you ask them a question, what about the market concerns you? Is that something you would lead with in that in that scenario? Yeah, then you open up, you open it up to kind of start taking it and peeling the onion back, right? Because here's the thing. If someone has a concern, you're not going to get them to all of a sudden flip their whole point of view by just doing one repeat and approve. Like if I'm truly concerned about the market, which a lot of people are, you're not just going to go, okay, what I hear you saying is this, is that correct? And then like all of a sudden, like I'm not concerned about the market. That's not the way it works. You're going to have to start peeling that onion back. You're going, to start, you're going to have to ask more questions like, hey, what is it about the market that is most concerning to you, right? Or like, what would be your ideal situation, right? Or, and this is where you're asking questions that get them to talk, right? You want to have open-ended questions, right? What is it about the market? What, is, you know, what scares you the most, right? Or like, what's different from last time compared to now, right? Or where would, what would have to happen for it to make sense for you? Right. These are all questions. I hope you guys are writing some of these questions down because these are very powerful questions that you can use in a multi multiple situations. Right. Like what would have to happen for this? Right. What's the what concern do you have? What is it about this that concerns you? Now you're getting them to open up and yeah. and and share with you, you know, like what the true concerns are. Yeah. Jay, what do you got? Um, no, what I wanted to add is is something to avoid, right? Is don't don't assume what their concern is. Don't don't assume that it's the interest rate. Don't don't give them the answer when you're asking them, right? What I what I see a lot of technique done incorrectly is you ask the question and then you'll say because of the interest rates. You got to let them open up, right? We don't know it all. We don't know their scenario, so I think it's important to. A lot of times we want to answer for them, but use that technique and you got to pause and sit back and allow them to explain to you what their actual concern is, because we don't want to give them the answer. We don't want to make up a concern for them. Yeah. Right? So it's important that you just let, Hey, okay. So what about the market? Are you concerned about? Is it, you don't want to go, is it the interest rates? Is it this? Is it? No, no. Let them, let them kind of develop their own thought process. Yeah. Something to avoid. It's like, it's like if you went to a doctor and he asked you one question and he gave you a prescription, right? Like you have to diagnose the patient correctly. If you're like, oh, my head hurts. All right, just take these and call me in the morning. It's like, no, like you got to ask more questions. Why does your head hurt? Has anything changed? What's has something changed with your diet? What, what was happening before when your head didn't hurt, right? Like all these things. So think of yourself as a doctor or a mechanic who's trying to properly diagnose and troubleshoot everything and ask all the questions. So that from there, you can now give a proper diagnosis and a prescription after that, right? Um, because if you're just given like, all right, here's the answer, and you didn't ask all the questions, like you're not doing a great job of advising people, right? So that's probably the biggest, biggest thing that I would implement, Maori, and add is take a step back. And then you like play into it with them. Like, hey, man, I totally understand. Like, I totally understand. Like a lot of people I'm talking to are having that concern. You know, you're not the only one. And then I would, then, then that would lead me to now be able to ask my next question. Like, hey, what is it? What, what is it about the market changes that most concerns you, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, just like advice for everyone else, um, Jason and I have been like doing this for a long time. When I started, it was just like all one-on-ones. The biggest thing that I would take away from this is always ask what would have to happen for, you know, you to make a really good decision or what about X is holding you back? Yeah. This is a lot and they really, really help. Yep. And think about it, guys. Like the more you get this down, you can now apply it to your presentations. You can apply it to when you meet someone at an open house. You can be over the phone, right? Like all of this stuff, these skills are going to translate to all these different areas. Uh, okay, good stuff, uh, Maori. We're gonna now jump to the next one. Thanks for for your participation, brother.
Um, okay, so I want to go back to what some of the concerns were. I have another agent. It's a huge one, right? You talk to people, oh, I'm already working with an agent. I already have another agent. Oh, no, I'm already working with someone, right? So I'm going to put someone in the hot seat right now, just calling them, and I'm going to throw that objection, and then we're going to, we're going to break it down. Um, is there anyone who would like to go before I just pick someone? Just raise your hand. All right. No one wants to go. So I'm going to call on, I'm going to call on Brenda. <laughs> Let's go, Brenda. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Hi. <laughs> All right, Brenda. So, um, hey, Brenda, thanks for calling. Yeah, it sounds good. But you know what? Um, I kind of have an agent that I'm already working with. You know, I kind of want to try things out with them and, you know, see what happens. Yeah, see what happens. Okay. Uh, sorry. It's kind of like, um, hi, Enrique. Uh, I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, we're on a live call. And what'd you say? What was that? <laughs> um, okay. So I understand that you're working with another agent, but would you be open to having a second opinion on the market with my team and I? Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. So let's go back to repeat and approve, right? Repeat and approve and sympathize with me that I'm working with another agent. Let me know you understand, right? All right, hey, Brenda. Um, yeah, thanks for calling, thanks for following up. You know, but I do have an, an agent that I'm currently, you know, working with and kind of want to see what happens with that. Okay, uh, hey, Enrique, I understand that you are working with another that you are working with another agent and you want to see how that goes. Um, is there, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, let's, we'll stop right there. Um, it's okay, don't worry. You're, I know I'm putting you on the spot, so. Enrique, I'll try, you want me to try with you? Yeah. I'll, I haven't done this for a while, so I'll try with you. Go ahead, Enrique, so. Um, give it Go back. ahead and mute yourselves, guys. Um, I'll see if I can, let me see what I can do. All right. Uh, hey, Jason, yeah, thanks for calling. Um, yeah, I was on Zillow before, but you know what? I, I kind of have an agent that I'm, I'm working with right now and, you know, just kind of met them. Just want to see, you know, how things develop with that agent first. Awesome, awesome, very good. So you, you, you have an agent that you're currently working with. I, I totally, totally understand that. Uh, what I would like to do, Enrique, is just get a chance to interview for the for the opportunity, and I can show you exactly what my team and I have been able to do in the past. We've currently already helped 160 families purchase a property this year, and I would like to show you how we're able to get our clients in contract. What time and day works best for you this week? Yeah, I, I appreciate the offer. I just... Yeah, I just I, I just kind of started working with this agent. I kind of feel a little bad, you know, just switching it up. You know, I kind of want to see what they're able to do first. No, no, I, I totally understand. So have you already written offers with this agent? Um, no, we just barely met and we're we're barely uh, kind of gonna go look at some homes. Okay, cool, cool. I, I totally understand. So so was he able to do like a buyer presentation and kind of go over in the buying process with you? Um we kind of just talked over the phone. It was a referral for my, my cousin. My cousin referred me to this agent. We kind of talked over the phone and we're supposed to go look at some homes this, this weekend. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I totally understand. What I would suggest doing, Enrique, is uh, definitely getting a buyer consultation, which my team and I can provide. Again, it's no cost, no obligation. Like I mentioned before, our team and I, we've already helped over 150 uh, clients this, this past you know six months. And I would like to show you just how we're able to do that. And the great thing is, Enrique, there's no commitment. Basically, what I can do is just kind of go over the buyer presentation, give you an idea of how it works. And then you can compare it to the agent that you're going to be meeting with this weekend. Right. What time what time would work best for you this week to meet? Um, I got to check with my wife and see how she feels, because it was like her cousin that referred us to agent. And yeah, I just kind of. You know how that goes, man. I don't, I don't want to start a fight with the wife. Oh no, no, I, I totally, totally understand. So the, the reason why I'm just kind of kind of pushing this right now, Enrique, is because I also have a list of about 200 homes that, that have been discounted. 
And I would like to share that list with you and your wife. So what time would work best for you and the wife to go to meet so I can go over that list with you? All right, fine. 1 p.m. tomorrow. All right. All right, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. All right, give it up for Jason. Sorry, right, guys, I'm a little rusty. Jason's rusty. Jason's a little rusty, but he's been doing this long enough where he just pulls it up. It's like riding a bike, right? Yeah. Um, give me your thoughts, guys. Put it in the chat. What did you feel? Give me your honest thoughts. What did, what did he do good? What do you think maybe was a little uh, different for you, right? Because Jason has his own style. Jason, you know, he's a little more aggressive and, and that's, that's Jason, right? He's a little more straight to the point. Um, what, was, what was good? What did you take away from that? And then what, thing, what was your perception of it? Just give me your overall feedback. And don't worry about hurting Jason's feelings. This is this is to make Jason better. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I don't have don't feelings. Worry. Can I can I add a quick rebuttal to that? Yeah. <clears throat> Jason, you got it. Okay, Jason. Uh, cool. If you want, just just send me that list of homes, man, and I'll definitely get back to you. You know, Mauricio, I I can definitely do that. But this list is something that I took time and energy to put into, so I only use that for my preferred buyers. And so, you know, and look, if you want to become one of my preferred buyers, or just see the list. I can go in and share that with you after we meet. What time would work best for you and your wife to meet this week? So there you go. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Okay. Uh, was pushy at first, but sold me on the discounted homes. He didn't take no for an answer. He went for it three times. He pushed past every no. He was very persistent and controlled the conversation. He was persistent, not taking no for an answer. He was persistent, polite, but not overbearing and controversial at the same time. All right. So the overall, he was confident. The overall arching theme is like persistent and confident and like not taking no for an answer. Who felt that? Raise your hand if you felt that. Right? Like my boy's not taking no for an answer, right? He's going to exhaust you, right? Till you, till you like you say yes. So now raise your hand if you were to do that if you think that would be uncomfortable for you to just keep pushing like that keep pushing like that like every time the guy like threw an, i threw an objection he was like yeah i know blah, 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 this now when's the next time we can meet right like raise your hand if you if if you're if you would be a little uncomfortable that's a little out of your comfort zone for you to like be that kind of aggressive and pushy Right. And guys, I, I was a little faster on this. I would probably build a little more rapport, but just for this context, I wanted to show you technique, right? This is more of a technique. This wasn't more rapport building. I didn't drag it on, but I wanted you to see the, the I, I acknowledged it, repeated it, and went back into going for the appointment, right? Obviously, there's going to be more fluff that you can add in there, right? Yeah. So what I want you guys to take away from this, guys, is that Sometimes we give up, right? And we were like one or two more, like little handling the objection, like one or two more times before the client would have said yes, right? Sometimes that client gives us a no and then we're like, oh, okay, well, when can I follow up with you then, right? We just kind of throw in the towel, right? So what I, wanted, what I want you guys to take away, guys, is that there's gonna be clients like me that just kept saying no just kept saying no, just kept saying no, right? And when they keep saying no, that's your opportunity to ask more questions, figure out what pain points are for me, right? Like what sort of value that he could bring. It's almost like you're trying to crack the puzzle, right? You're trying to figure out like where my hot spot is, like where my spot is like, okay, this is, this is the concern that I really have. Right. And just keep going, keep going. And then going, what I, what I want you to pay attention to is I gave him an objection. He handled it. And then he came right back on course to like, when would be the best time for us to meet? Right. And that's called like, that's called like the straight line process, right? It's a straight line process where if I'd have to draw it, let me see if I can draw. I don't know if I can draw on this, but if you have a, if you have a piece of paper, you have your starting point here which is like the, the beginning of the conversation and you have your end point here, which is you set the appointment. The ideal way is to just do a straight line, right? Like you start, you say something and you go straight to the appointment. It doesn't happen that way, 
right? What happens is you start here, you say something, then the conversation goes down because they give you an objection. Then you got to bring it back up Then you got to bring it back down. But you always want to go back to that middle line, which is going back to asking for the appointment, right? So they give you an objection. You're going to go off course, you handle it. And then you come back to, hey, you got to assume like I handled that. We're good. Now, hey, when would be the best time for us to meet, right? What happens a lot of times is that someone gives you an objection and then like you go like off road and you go down a whole different path and you go out in the weeds and you're nowhere even back on the straight line that you were attempting to be in the first place. Liliana, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so I find that when I do these scripts, like, you know, like phone calls or like when I practice with people, I'm like pretty confident I have them. But the thing that I'm finding right now is how do you handle objections with like over text message? Because there's a lot of clients that I have where I call them, it goes straight to voicemail and then they'll text me like, what's up? So like, I feel like my only opportunity to talk to them is, is through like text message. Like they, and I'm always like, oh, well, let's jump on a call or like, let's jump on a Zoom and, and, you know, like I can go over some of your concerns and they're like, and they just ignore what I say and they keep typing like, um, like I could kind of share one. I just now some guy was like super short. It's like, realistically, there's a shift in favor of a buyer's market. Eventually the feds will limit the rate to cool down inflation. I think there will be more inventory on the market in a few months and sellers will be desperate to sell at a lower price. So I was like, let's talk about it. But he doesn't want to talk to me. He just wants to text. That's, that's, that's a good question. Um, and I think here's what we got to understand. Like, you're not going to win via text. Right. right? Like, I would, um, text should only be used to send like short communication. I agree. And a lot of times people try to replace a text, replace a phone call with a text message. Um, so what I would do is I would, I would not like try to do this. Right. I would take his concern and like, I would bring it in and I would make it mine. And I would say, Hey, you know what? I think you're right. I think you may have some valid points. That's exactly why we should meet so that we can figure out what's the best way to prepare for that. Right. And how, how do you position yourself? And then what I would do is I would maybe one up him and I would send like a video, right. Um, send a video like, Hey, um, Hey, Jake, it's Liliana. Like, hey, I'd, I'd rather send you a video and then kind of go back and forth through text. You know, what you say, there's a lot of concern of what you say. You know what I mean? Like, I don't disagree with you. There are changes in the market, but that's exactly why we should meet to at least kind of brainstorm and figure out what's the best way to position you, you know, so that when you're, when you are ready, like, you know, exactly what you need to do. Um, okay. Is that fair? You know, instead of like you saying, like, like kind of going back and forth, back and forth, you're not going to get to the outcome you want. Right. Yeah. That, that's a trouble that I'm having with a lot of people. It's like, I feel like they're willing to have conversations, but none of them via zoom in person or over the phone. It's like the only way I can get to them is like through text message. And I feel like it's not as effective, but at least they're responding. So yeah. And here's what you got to know too, is that some people just like to argue to argue. Yeah. Right. There's, there's people that just like to argue. They like, they want to be right. So you got to let them be right. Hey, you want to, you want to be the winner? You're the winner. That's fine. Like, remember your job is to get that appointment and use whatever tactics you need to get. So if you got to play the game, you play the game. Right. Um, and a lot of times our ego comes into play, like where we're like trying to battle and go back and forth and then there's no outcome there. Right. So when you have like an abrasive person or someone who has really, really strong feelings, you don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water right? Like you want to calm him and soothe them and agree with them and say yes. And stuff. And that's psychology, right? Right. Um, you know, so that's, that would be my recommendation. And then the other thing too, is just remember it's a numbers game, right? Like maybe right now, if he feels that strong, or like he gave you this whole paragraph about the shift in the market and the stocks mm -hmm. and all this stuff, like you're not, it's probably gonna be really hard to change his mind. Right. And that's cool. And that's why you just got to, you know, do what you can. And then if it doesn't work, just say, hey, cool, I'll follow up with you in, in three months. Is that fair? Boom. Okay. Um, did that help? Yeah, I like the I like the video idea because I feel like I feel like the video, I can communicate like the tone that I want. I can explain what I want. It's almost like a phone call, or it's almost as if I have them face to face. So I'll try yeah, that. Exactly. Exactly. 
what one of the other lines that I use again, I think these are certain tools you can use is like, hey, you know, I totally understand where you're coming from, Enrique. Uh, but if I was able to find you the right property in the right location with the right terms at the right price, would you consider purchasing sooner than later? Right. Okay. So that may go well with the text as well. Right. Or, right. or even in a video. Right. It's just asking that. Well, hey, I, I totally understand that you want to wait. You know, you, you, you understand that you're, you're thinking there's going to be more inventory. Totally understand that. But if I was able to find you the right property in the right location with the right terms at the right price, would you consider purchasing sooner than later? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, I'll try that. What Jason is doing right there, guys, is he's posing a scenario, right? He's creating a hypothetical scenario. That's, the, that's that technique there. If X, then Y. Hey, I understand your concern. And like, these are the things. If we can do boom, 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 would it make sense for you to still look into this, right? And here's the thing is what you want to be careful with is asking someone for a commitment on the call, right? That's the other thing that, that's really important is you're selling the appointment. You're not selling the sale. And sometimes we're trying to say, well, hey, if I can get you a better deal, would you work with me? Right? Or like, hey, if I can do this for you, then would you buy? It's like, no, you got to go back to selling the meeting, right? Selling the appointment, right? And it depends what scenario you're in. Like, like right now, if we're assuming we're on the phone, you're trying to sell, let's meet. When you're in person, then you're trying to sell like that's close the deal, right? Like that's that's the big difference there. No, that, that's good that you point that out, Enrique, because I typically don't use that or would suggest using that that technique unless that's almost like at the very end, right, Liliana, where, where they're not giving you anything. So it's like, hey, well, hey, you know, I got nothing to lose by throwing this out there, right? Yeah. But, but again, I think Enrique, though, it's good that you correct that, Enrique, because it's important that we are shooting for the appointment, but I use that as well. Shit, I ain't getting the appointment anyway. So let me let me go ahead and throw that out there and let's see if I can pull them back in. Right. Like you're offering yeah. them something of value. Like, well, like, well, like even like the other agent scenario. Like, did the other agent show you like sometimes people want to bet a good deal? So if the other agent's not offering discounted homes, then they'd be like, hmm, I know I'm gonna work with that agent, but if you have discounted homes, send them my send them my way. Yeah. You're and, giving them something that yeah. What I follow up with that line or that that technique is after they say yes, yeah, you know what, actually, I would consider purchasing sooner. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and set a time to meet so we can go over and see what, what type of area property you're actually looking for. So then I would follow, once I get them to say yes, then I follow back up to setting that appointment, right? Yeah. And, and here's the thing too, is like a lot of these things, you just got to try them too. You got to try them and you got to figure out your own style, right? Mm -hmm. As you try these different things and you kind of make it your own, you'll kind of find your sweet spot that comes off like comfortable for you. Yeah. Something that I've noticed, and it's kind of like what you said is like in this market, I, I feel like I'm, there's like more handholding. I'm having to have more conversations with people. I'm having to book more phone calls. I'm having to book more like Zoom strategy sessions. I'm having to like be on the phone with them while they like they they air out their concerns. And there's people that I think are really wanting to buy, but they just hear the noise and they're not sure. So I feel like in the type of like before, I'd meet with like someone maybe twice and I can get them to to submit an offer. Now it's like like it's more of that like rapport and relationship building where like all right we met today we saw a few homes let's touch base again none of them worked out for you then I set another appointment and then I sent another appointment to like kind of build that trust because right now there's so many people like unsure of what they're doing so I think it's just taking longer to get people to the offer table because the market's shifting so I think yeah. it's more work for us so I like the, the 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 goal of like you know, maybe another, let's touch base again. And then that gives me another, another time to be in front of them. Um, and it gives me another time to go through, like, I probably have gone through this script with one client, like three times, <laughs> um, but it gives them that ease. It, it, so, um, so yeah, I, I like the fact that like, maybe you're not always going to close them, but maybe set up another time to see how they feel and then see how they feel later. And, Cause I feel like it's becoming more emotional now than before. Oh yeah, definitely. The emotions are high, you know, because yeah. there's a lot of noise and, and when there's a lot of noise, that just means there's more data and there's more nurturing and there's more rapport building right. that needs to happen. Right. People are going to buy, like people are going to buy, but they're going to buy with caution. Right. They're going to, they want to be informed. 
Whereas before it was just like, buy, 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 interest rates are low, buy, buy, buy. Right now it's like, hey, buy, but now we got to make sure it's right. We got to make sure all these different things. So it, it does require you to step your game up. Now we have a couple minutes left. I wanted to, I don't want to deviate from the, the answering the last objection that was with Jason um, of I have another agent, right? Um, so for our last six minutes, we'll go over that um, because that's, that's going to be a common one, right? People are working with other people. You're going to hear that a lot. So um, what Jason did well was he started offering a bunch of stuff, right? You guys saw that he was, he's more aggressive than probably the average person. He's, he pushed, he didn't take no for an answer. He kept going back for the appointment, even though like he would go off track, he would answer it. He would still come back to let's book the appointment. He'd go off track, answer it. Let's book the appointment. Now here's some advice though. I want to give, um, you know, based off that here's some advice because when someone is working with an agent, it's, under, it's important to understand the context of how they found that agent, right? Because what I told them was like, hey, my wife's cousin or someone like that, like it was a family friend or whatever. It's hard to sometimes break that when they have like a close personal family friend, right? It's going to be hard to break that. So what I would do if I were Jason is I was asked more questions around the relationship with that agent, how they met and like what their feedback was so far. I would never bash an agent because when you bash an agent or say like, hey, did your agent do this? Did your agent do that? Like, it's like you're indirectly bashing them. It, it doesn't make you look good. Always just talk about what you do. This is what we do. This is how we're different than most agents. This is what we do. Um, and ask what's important to them, right? So when someone tells me they have an agent, I would first acknowledge it, right? Repeat and approve. Oh, okay, so you have an agent you're working with. Hey. Totally understand. I get that. Hey, I appreciate the loyal loyalty. Loyalty is huge, right? Like that's that's awesome. Um, let me ask you, how'd you guys go about finding that agent? Right? How'd you guys go about finding that agent? Let's role play this, Jay. Um Good. so Jay, um, hey, you have an agent, man. Totally understand. Like, I would never want to step on anybody's toes. Like, I totally acknowledge that and appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the loyalty too. Um, let me ask you, Jason, like, how'd you go about finding that agent? Actually, my, my wife, um, my wife's friend referred the agent to my wife and I. Okay. So your wife's friend referred the agent. Do you know if they work together with your wife's friend or maybe they just knew them or, um, I believe she helped, she helped my wife's friend purchase a property. Okay. Okay. Got it. So it's like a friend of a friend. Hey, yeah. totally understand that man. Like, um, the last thing we would want to do is, is come break up something that was going good. You know, let me ask you real quick, you know, because I, I want to be cautious around your relationship. Um, how's it been going so far? Like, what do, what do you like most about working with that agent? You know, where are you, uh, where are you at in the process? Yeah. You know, we, we just had a quick conversation, my wife and I, and, and the agents, and we're going to be looking at property this weekend. Oh, okay. So you guys just had a quick combo and you're going to start looking at property already. Yes, yes. Oh, man, that's that's fast. Is that speed kind of the speed you want to go? Um, yeah, well, we're looking to see if we can be in a property before uh, before the or by the end of September. Got it. Okay. The next Got three it. months, I would say two and a half Got months. It. OK, OK. Hey, I totally understand. So want to be in the property in the next three months. Let me ask you, how confident are you guys like about your knowledge of the market and like what's happening with the changes in the market right now? I would say I'm not knowledgeable at all. Okay. Okay. Um, totally hear you. A lot of people aren't that knowledgeable. And I, you know, and, and I ask you that because what, what we're seeing with a lot of our clients right now is that there's so many changes happening with the interest rates and the inventory, and there's different opportunities right now, but a lot of people just don't even understand what's going on truly. Like they hear the, the news and the news paints a different picture. Enrique, I don't mean to cut you off, but I mean, I appreciate you giving me all this information, but you know, let me go ahead and take down your number. And I'll go ahead and call you back, you know, if anything changes with my other agent. Okay. Hey, I totally respect that. Let me, uh, before I let you go, Jason, would it, would it be beneficial if you were just educated on the market first before you even start looking at homes? Yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Cause here's what we do with our clients. We always do a first time home buyer consultation before we look at any home, we get you on the line with our lender so they can walk you through all the options. I do personally do a, a consultation where I break down what's happening in the market, where the opportunities are, where there's some hot deals. We're seeing a lot of hot deals right now. Um, it takes about 30 minutes. Would that be a benefit before you even start looking at homes to at least know that information? 
Yeah, yeah, it definitely would be. Okay, so here's what I would want to do. I'm not asking you to stop working with your agent. Like, if they're able to do all that and it's working out great, but I would at least think it, it would be fair to you and your wife for you to know that info first before you decide to go look at homes and get yourself involved with putting offers on property. So what I can do is I can give you a free consultation, no obligation, and you can just kind of see what we do and compare that to whatever else you're getting right now. And then you decide from there what makes the most sense. I have some time tomorrow. Uh, those mornings or afternoons work better for you. Enrique, I really appreciate it, but let's do this. Let me go in and meet with my, my agent that I'm going to be meeting with this weekend. Uh, let me okay. see how it goes. You know, I don't know what they have prepared for me, but let me meet with them and then I'll follow up with you next week. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, when are you guys meeting? Uh, we're going to be going out Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Okay, cool. So why don't I do this? I'll, I'll give you a ring maybe Monday and then kind of see what, you know, what happened over the weekend. And then if it makes sense for us to meet, then we'll book a time to meet. Does that sound fair? Sounds fair to me. Okay, cool. Perfect. Um, it's good. So what I want you to see guys is that there's going to be some where maybe you can't book the appointment. Like I could have kept pushing a little bit more, but I was feeling like I was on the line. Like if I pushed a little bit more, like it would have turned them off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and sometimes you got to let people go experience something else before they can truly value what you have to offer. But I did find the weak point there. Right. I found the weak point in where that he was not knowledgeable at all. Yeah. No, I like it. No, that was, that was good. That was really good. I think uh, what I liked about it was, again, you weren't so pushy, right? You kind of eased up. And, and again, um, I think, you know, again, you have the opportunity to follow up. If I don't have a great experience yeah. this weekend, you have, you have, you have the opportunity to follow up with me. Right. Yeah. Um, again, for me, what I like to use as a technique is also just saying, Hey, Enrique, you know, I totally understand you're going to go this weekend. You know, how about, you know, again, we meet, I can show you what we have to offer, show you how we're able to have, we've been able to have success. And you can compare it with the agent that you're going to be working with this weekend. And, and again, you can, at least you have two, two consultations, you know, before you yeah. start looking at property. Right? Yeah. Stuff like that. But no, it's good. That, that it's, I don't, again, guys, for me, I like it when they have an agent. I like it when they're pre-approved because that means they are excited to purchase or they're excited to, they already went through the process of getting pre-approved. So my biggest thing is during this role play is the mindset of not being discouraged if they're already pre-approved with another lender or if they're already working with another real estate agent. To me, that's a good thing. That means these guys are motivated. They already set, the, the ball's already rolling. So it's just our opportunity to go ahead and show them why they want to work with PRG, why they're going to want to get a consultation with us, mm -hmm. right? And I think, so don't be discouraged when someone say they're working with someone else at all, zero. You should get excited yeah. because that means you have someone that's hot, that's ready to, that's ready to transact. And then here, here's, the, here's the last thing, right? Is like after I hung up with Jason, there's certain things I need to do if I want to still try to get that opportunity, right? I need to make sure I put a reminder to call him on Monday. Because if I say I'm going to call him on Monday and I never call him, my credibility is completely lost, right? If I knew that he was looking for a $2 million home, it'd be worth it for me to make sure I call him back on Monday. Right. Because I got I have to think there's a 50 50 shot that I have that he goes out and they meet this agent. And now that I've kind of put that little doubt, like, hey, did you are you informed about the market? And then like the agent doesn't inform them about anything, just shows them homes and says, hey, do you want to write an offer? And then when I call him back, like, hey, how did it go? Right. How confident do you feel now? Did you get the information you were looking for? There's a 50 50 shot that they got it. Right. Which those odds are pretty good. Right. So the other thing is too, is I could easily like hang up with them and I could send them a video text, right? Hey, Jason. Hey, it was great talking to you, man. I, I just want to put a face to the name. Um, like I said, what I would really like to do is this, blah, blah, blah. Here's a link to my website. Here's a link to my reviews. And what I'm doing is I'm showing him like, this is how we work. And if his agent didn't do any of that stuff, he's going to be like, damn, this is a different type of agent. This is a different caliber agent here. Like this guy just called me over the, over the phone and just said, let's look at homes on Saturday. All right. And then I would, I would slowly like reiterate and resell why they need to meet with me. Again, you know, guys, I think we have to really take confidence in the product and the service that we provide because a lot of agents are not getting this type of training. A lot of agents don't have a buyer consultation, a formal one. So, and again, I work with a lot of outside agents from outside of PRG because of our lending team. So I know that the talent and the, the, 
the set of skills and the structure that we have with PRG is a lot higher standard, a, high, a lot higher level than other agents outside of our company. And I think a lot of times we assume everyone's doing it the way we're doing it. It's not correct, guys. So uh, take a lot of confidence in learning the, you know, these, these trainings and the buyer script, the, uh, the buyer presentation, and educating our buyers because a lot of agents and loan officers are not doing that, right? So don't assume that, guys. Yep. And that's a wrap, guys. Uh, thank you for showing up today. Hope you guys got some value today. We'll do this again next week. And let's sharpen our skills and go out there and make stuff happen. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Enrique.